So Jan Werner, you're the director general of ISA. In fact, it's not the first time for you here uh, because you've been here previously. But as the director general, so how do you see uh, this uh, program with the Russian and the astronauts? For me, it's the first time as a director general of ISA to be here, and I'm very happy to see the flags of the different nations over here and the flag, of course, of ISA. So it shows that cooperation in space is working. So this time we have a. European astronaut of Danish nationality. We have a Kazakh and a Russian cosmonaut, and I think this shows really that space can work. And I'm very, very happy, and of course, uh, it's impressive to see the launcher here now coming to the site. The, the ISS is the program we've been working on for several years, and it will go on this way. We yes, so the ISS is for me a very important uh, instrument. It's not only because it's doing uh, research on the highest level in a double sense, meaning 300 kilometers above the Earth and also contents-wise. But at the same time, as, which is always important for me, it's an international space station. So we have astronauts and cosmonauts from America, from Russia, from Japan, uh, from Canada and from Europe. So it's really a very nice thing, and I'm very, very happy about that. Esben Larsen, you are the Minister for Higher Education and Science in Denmark. Uh, what is your first impression of uh, this location? Well, it's it's an amazing location. Uh, you know, it's in the middle of the desert with all these installations to uh, rocket and science, so of course it's very inspiring to see. For you, Denmark, it's an important time because you have the first uh, Danish man in, in space. Uh, what is the feeling in, for you and your country? Well, it's a good feeling and we're very happy for Andreas Mogensen and also for his family for this experience and of course for Denmark. It's a big step that you can uh, put a man in space and also with the technology and all the, the research that goes into a project like that, it is an important investment for Denmark. Bill Gerstenmeyer, NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Exploration. Bill. Um, 
a multinational crew getting ready to launch. Uh, how do you view the significance of this mission and uh, the fact that uh, we are blending an expedition crew member with a visiting crew for this flight? Yeah, I think it'll be really interesting to see the nine crew on orbit. Uh, you know, the Danish have a very uh, extensive science program planned for this uh, short duration piece. It'll be a very, very busy time for the crew. I think it'll be exciting to see the nine folks on orbit, see them working together, and then see the, uh, the one-year expedition crew interact with this kind of short-term crew. So we'll get a chance to see the one-year crew interact with, the, with kind of the nine-day crew. So you'll get to see the intensity of a very busy, packed nine days, kind of fitting in with the longer, slower, more meticulous one-year increment. So it'll be a very interesting dynamic to watch during this expedition. You know, I'm struck by the fact that uh, we're looking at the ride home for Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko next March as they approach the midway point of this uh, unprecedented flight aboard the International Space Station. What are your thoughts on how it's gone so far and what the objectives are from this point on? Again, I think it's gone extremely well from an overall science standpoint. The joint science between the Russians and the U.S. has just been outstanding during this one-year expedition. Like you said, we're at the halfway point, so there's really been nothing new. I mean, we've been here before, but this next period, these next 180 days or so, will be very interesting to see if there's any changes, see if anything occurs that's different than we've anticipated. But the rigor of the science, the data takes, all the information has been very solid so far. We'll continue to get that during this next period so it's exciting seeing this one year expedition pan out and it's it's neat as you said to think that this vehicle is the vehicle that they will be coming home on mike suffredini international space station program manager mike uh, in your final days after so many years as program manager uh, this has got to be a bittersweet maybe a satisfying moment how would you characterize your feelings as you watch the soyuz being prepared for launch well, I think those are good descriptions, Rob. You know, 20 years doing this, I've seen uh, the entire assembly, well over 150 flights to ISS to build this thing, to transition it to utilization, uh, to see the commercial side growing, which is so important to the future of, of uh, both ISS and our ability to do exploration in the future. Um, the critical research going on, the first steps for exploration beyond uh, low Earth orbit occurring on board ISS. It's very gratifying, and uh, you know the program is in is in super shape. the The vehicle itself is in in uh, in fantastic condition, uh, very very healthy. Uh, we're we're working on transitioning it to uh, to to docking you know, for the commercial crew, so we can increase the number of crew visiting ISS and doing important research on board. Uh, the management team in place uh, is is uh, very capable. A team and uh, and of course the partnership is is uh, healthy and supportive uh, and so it's uh, it's gratifying to have come this far with the team it's great to see it's in uh, good shape for the future it's very very sad to be uh, stepping away from it though the legacy you know there's a multinational crew about to board this vehicle uh, this is the ride home for Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko next March you feel you forged an important legacy, not just for the technical aspect of what's been accomplished, but the international piece of this? Yeah, and I, I don't describe it as much a legacy as um, really the job we set out to do. And uh, all of the, and you said it very well, uh, and all of us who are involved in this business, uh, who ultimately want to see us explore beyond, well beyond low Earth orbit, know we have to do it together. It needs to be a partnership with many, many countries. Um, and we have forged a great start uh, for the future of mankind in terms of exploring well beyond low Earth orbit. So, and from that respect, yeah, it sort of is a legacy. We've, we've, uh, we've got this vehicle in orbit. It's doing all the important stuff we need it to do for our next steps, uh, both in low Earth orbit and beyond. Um, and we forged a fantastic partnership that'll be critical uh, for our future uh, in the years to come.